welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and this one as you can tell is a little bit different because you're in my workshop. Um, you might have, if you've been watching Harry's Garage videos for uh, the last few months, you will have seen that the Lamborghini Espada is currently undergoing, well, an engine rebuild and a few other bits up at Ian Tyrrell's workshop up in Chester. And the next car in the garage I wanted to do something with was my little Lancia Fulvia Sport. I hope you've watched the video on this car because it's pretty close to my heart, this car. This is the one I bought just over a year ago now. And it was a car that really got me into cars because I saw this very car in 1972 outside my house in Birkenhead. And I suddenly realised that there was some glamorous cars out there that I never knew existed. Now, I picked this car, I, I bought it and I knew it needed work. And there was a choice whether to do the Lamborghini Espada or this one. I went for the Lamborghini Espada because that one basically wasn't running right at all and wasn't really drivable. While this was drivable, um, quite healthy really, and it had a bare metal um, respray and repaint um, in 2002, but unfortunately wasn't done particularly well. And the chap who owned it at that point was not happy with it and then he fell ill and then it sat in a garage for a few years and he sadly passed away and that's when I ended up with it. So it was a bit of work but it drives ace but the bodywork will need attention and I thought I'd bring it in here put it up on this lift and just check how I can sort of preserve it and so I've saved up enough pennies to do a proper rebuild on it and I found a few scary things. So here, th now the li this little Lancia is front wheel drive and it's all carried on this strange sort of frame, subframe that carries the engine and the suspension. That is actually a leaf spring that goes across here and does both left and right suspension on this leaf spring here. There's a drive shaft, you probably can't see, disc brakes, etc. But it's just the way Lancia put the body together on this car. It left the Lancia factory as a Fulvia, gets a Zagato, they hack the body off and then put their own panels on and it means you've got unfortunately sort of joins and things going on I think that's original Lancia here but the rust had hadn't really been protection so it's not rusted through but this was all showing starting to go rust and I've just flicked a piece off here and you can see the rust there on that seam so that I'm attacking that I'm going to attack that now um, a drill and wire brush just to get that off and then I will paint this with a special fluid which I'll show you in a moment but it's just it sort of needs doing this one isn't too bad um, but it needs attention. If I drove it and it got any salt on it or anything like that, this would this car would just self-destruct. It's um, it, the, the the metal they built Lancia with in the 60s and 70s and Fiat's and Ferraris just wasn't a very good grade of steel, and it just like rusts. For that's all it wants to do. But I'll show you a bit of a horror on the other side in the other wheel arch now. This one's sort of similar again, you've got these sort of patches that have appeared and there's a lot of um, treatment needed on the inner arch here. But I was a bit shocked to find in this corner, yeah, down here, I was just scraping away and then this came away, revealing how they'd actually done it. So that, uh, well, I can't get over on this repair, that is bare untreated metal. That's an inner arch and a new wing no treatment whatsoever. Oh, we'll just cover it with a bit of rubber. That'll seal it up. That's all there was. No wonder it was all going rusty. So this was done in 2002. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, as you'd imagine, it's all starting to rust, but I've caught it fairly early. So I think we're gonna be all right. But again, it's just patchy on the seams again here as well. So the other wheel arch is just the same. This, there was nothing really protecting this. I'm not quite sure what this covers up. I think it looks like an anti-roll bar or something to me. Uh, a few patches there. But what I really wanted to show you was the side of the body. So the Gato body, this is the Gato coming, body coming down here. Underneath here is the original Fulvia um, sill. But it, under here was a horror story because when they did the rebuild in 2002, there is a basically an upside down gutter bit here that joins the Zagato body onto the Fulvia. And there was no protection on it at all. So if I come down here, 
there's 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 the body coming down here and then under here I've just treated all that because there was nothing that was just rusting away under there I open the door you can sort of see how it works so the sill runs runs along there like that and then the front it does the same thing there, there's the shiny wing all the reflections and I do that you can then see underneath there is just the most perfect place to for a, uh, Italian car to go rusty and that space there a sort of channel designed to pick up mud and that was and that was completely unprotected had no seam on it whatsoever so I've I've well I've brushed it down and I've just put an anti-rust treatment on it and I will then seal it and paint it and all sorts of things so that's what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of days tidying up that chassis retreating it and then seeing it with some anti -flowers. it just seems worth it for this car it's not rusted through it's not great big holes but it all needs attention and then after I've done that I'll go on to doing something with the engine because this car booked it into a rolling road in a couple of weeks time there's a few little mods I want to do first so I'll sort the body out and then we'll have a look at the engine well, morning from the little Lancia uh, Fulvia Sport. It's big day today for this car because we're off uh, for a, an engine tuner, potentially rolling road. It's, um, there we are, just adjusting the choke, which would be a foreign thing to many of the viewers who haven't lived with an older car like this. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's on these, oh, it's a strange noise on choke and I've now remembered because I've put the seat belt on um, I can't turn the choke off ah, this is this car ages from the days before the inertia seat belt so you are fixed in place a bit like having a sort of harness on or something and then you have to remember that it's got a uh, a dog leg gearbox and first is where second is on the gearbox now been playing around with the engine on this the, the rebuild is on um, had to press the pause button on it um, due to the Espada the Espada the, the, it's, it's the Espada that's getting all the attention this year oh, now I've got a misting up windscreen oh the joys of old cars but the engine has the mother of flat spots which I'll explain in a moment once the engines warmed up a bit more and it means it doesn't really run below 3000 rpm very well and it also has a petrol leak which is more worrying so i actually brought with me this is quite a neat little thing these are these fire sticks this is a extinguisher that you can carry with you chuck in the car and it's almost like a like a firework in, in effect you you strike it with that take that thing off the base and then strike the top and then it you pointed at the fire and it's way lighter and actually lasts a lot longer than the conventional uh, extinguisher and I quite like the idea of it I've never used one I've seen YouTube videos of it Jay Leno did a sort of thing on it as well but it's just useful because of the size of it and uh, I hope I never use it but with a petrol leak on the car and having had that uh, 350 SL uh, go up in flames um, I carry a extinguisher on cases like this. Now I have to work out how I can turn the choke off. Ugh, take the seat belt off, I think. Ugh. Hides under the dash. How on earth are you meant to know where it is if you have no knowledge with car, you just get in it. Oh, I don't know. Old cars. Right, I'm, I'm nearly at the um, Rolling Road at the Central Facility. But yeah, I just want to demonstrate what this flat spot is. And it's, uh, we just had a bit of a hill start at a junction and it was a bit of a nightmare actually to get away. Handbrake isn't the best in this car. But it basically won't, it, it stutters and splutters at lower RPM. And I'm running this car on open trumpets now, I'm taking the air cleaner off. I was going to put socks, as they term, individual air cleaners on each trumpet. That was the plan. Oh, but it, it, they won't fit, unfortunately, the trumpets are too close. But if I, if I come up to a junction like this and try and put away normally, I'll get... I've got my foot down. No. Oh, no, we're off. Yeah. 
rally car, it's great fun, makes wonderful noises, this little um, 1600 V4 Lancia engine. But it just won't go from tick over up to 2000 RPM. Oh, sorry, the sun is bleating us out. So I'm, I know it's a carburetor um, issue. So I've got a carburetor kit. When I took the air cleaner box off, I then discovered this uh, fuel leak. I'll just show you the, oh, let's just get this. Car, carburetor kit. There we are, I'll blot the sun out. Carburetor kit. Which I'm hoping is gonna cure this low speed running issue. Yeah, basically, I just can't wait to see what magic they can do on this engine, really. They like tackling these little cars. Um, they they, they specialise in the older cars and carburetor setup. And these Solex apparently are very fickle to set up, they, but they're not phased by that at all. So, fingers crossed, by tonight I have a very different car to come home in. the well um, just bring the car out done a power run and everything and um, they, they cured the carburetor leak that was a unfortunately a bit of corrosion there must have been some moisture in the carbs and it sat that period it sat around for a while has just caused a bit of corrosion inside the carburetor right underneath so that's a bit of a worry but they've managed to seal it up uh, adjusted the points I really ought to get it on proper uh, electronic ignition and yeah they've got round there's the it's no stumble oh that's good oh I just love simple cars like this they use part of the kits did a few gaskets o-ring stuff like that haven't checked the um, haven't changed the jets just blew them out adjusted the carburetors did a power run and it's within one horsepower of where it should be as standard the torque is a little bit higher and total bill 228 pounds including VAT fantastic and now I have a car that sounds like this Zagato. I didn't know how much I liked Lancia engineering from this period as well, the, the v, funny little V4 engine. Front wheel drive put me off, 
now I just revel in it because it makes it such a neat little hand, handling car. And then two, it just makes me smile. It just cheers me up. When I see this sitting in the garage, I love it to bits. Just like the look and the family love it as well, which is always a good thing. And then three, it's, it's the rarity. It's, it's one of those go find another. Um, I took the opportunity when it came up, oh, it wasn't quite right, but I just had to have it. And then, then I've discovered how rare they are. You're talking 30 or so surviving 1600s of Gartos globally, right hand drive, and about maybe 10, 11 in the UK, something like that. So it's a proper rare thing. And yet it's a sort of familiar shape and parts are fairly easy. And it's just cute, it's just, and the price point is good as well. So there you go, that's the reasons I own this car. Um, I'm really chuffed to have those little updates done. The engine feels as healthy as anything, smokes a bit. There's a rebuild needed, but not for a while. Done all the body, I'll have a lovely summer with it. And uh, you'll probably be seeing it another time. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Um, if you have enjoyed it, well, please subscribe, touch the notifications, have a look at Harry's farm as well, because there'll be some more videos coming along very soon.